Nestled in the mountains between France and Spain, there is a semi-isolated population of native European people that have long puzzled anthropologists, linguists, and historians because although they are Caucasoid, they do not fit in with the rest of the European population. Their language, for example, is distinctly unique in Europe and not related to any other Indo-European language. But that's not the only thing that's unique about the Basque. The Basque turned out to also be unique in terms of blood. Prior to the advent of genetic research tools, investigators used the ABO blood groups to study the relationships between human populations as well as their migration patterns. Each person's blood is one of four major types, A, B, AB, or O. Blood types are determined by the types of antigens on the blood cells. Antigens are proteins on the surface of blood cells that can cause a response from the immune system. The Rh factor is a type of protein on the surface of red blood cells. Most people are Rh positive. Those who do not have the Rh factor are Rh negative which compromises about 15% of the world's population, but appears in much higher percentage among the Basque, which as a population contain among the highest levels of Rh negative blood in the world. The Basque people currently inhabit the area surrounding the Pyrenees Mountains, where Cro-Magnon man left behind some of his and her most famous artwork over 30,000 years ago, but exactly who are the Basque and where did they come from? I decided that a great place to find out is the University of Nevada since it houses the Center for Basque Studies. This organization is primarily a research center that conducts and publishes on Basque related topics such as anthropology, history, cultural studies, etc. Here's what they had to say about the Basque people and their origins, and this comes from their website's frequently asked questions. Question, where did the Basque come from? No one knows exactly where the Basque come from. Some say they have lived in the area since Cro-Magnon man first roamed Europe. Some say they are descended from the original Iberians. More fanciful theories exist as well. One is that the Basques are the descendants of the survivors of Atlantis. Question, where did the Basque language come from? Just as no one is sure about the origins of the Basque themselves, linguists are not in agreement over the origins of Uskara, the Basque language, either. When asked, I found that the majority of the Basque people themselves maintain that they came from Atlantica, a powerful maritime nation that sank into the Atlantic Ocean after a terrible cataclysm and from which a few survivors reached the Bay of Biscay and the Pyrenees Mountains. This, they say, is not just mythology, but their true pre-European ancestry. There's another ancient people who claim racial lineage from the mythical Atlanteans. The Berbers are currently located geographically around Mount Atlas, but inhabit much of North Africa long before the Arabs arrived. The Berbers are considered the aboriginals of the area, and their origins beyond that are not officially known. Here we have a population, many of whom have blue eyes and light hair, living in northwest Africa of all places, and among some of the blonde tribes still living near the Atlas Mountains of Morocco, the percentage of Rh negative blood can reach 40%. Now keep in mind, that's not the general uh, national average, but restricted to certain local tribes. Anthropologists, for the most part, dismissed them for many years because they didn't fit well with the out of Africa paradigm. So it was presumed that they had migrated from somewhere in Europe. However, that theory has been abandoned with the current understanding of genetics. Scientists now accept the genetic evidence 
That concludes Berbers are an indigenous, indigenous people which they believe are descended from native Upper Paleolithic Cro-Magnon types going straight back into the Pleistocene or Ice Age. This should make it easier to understand why the oldest remains found in Egypt, nicknamed Ginger and currently on display in the British Museum, has naturally red hair. This is pre-dynastic, which means before the pharaohs and before the accepted dating of the pyramids. I can go on for quite some time about blonde and red-headed mummies and blue-eyed statues, but I'll save that for a future video on ancient Egypt. For now, let us turn to another population native to an island off of the African coast who also left mummies and pyramids. The Guanches were very tall, powerfully built, blonde and red-haired indigenous natives of the Canary Islands, specifically the island of Tenerife. To date, there is still no evidence that the Guanches had any knowledge of maritime technology, which begs the question, how did they get there? This isolation allowed the Guanche to maintain a racial exclusivity until the time of the Spanish conquest. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, 11th edition, concerning the ethnic origins and racial identity of the Canary Island Guanches, and I quote, the Guanches are thought to have been of Cro-Magnon origin with blue or gray eyes and blondish hair. Madame Blavatsky, foundress of the Theosophical Society, points out that the genetic relations between these three populations, well over a hundred years before our modern understanding of DNA, uh, and I quote, she says, if then the Basque and Cro-Magnon cavemen are of the same race as the Canaries Guanches, it follows that the former are also allied to the Aborigines of America, the Atlantean affinities of the three types becomes patent. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an author and anthropologist and would like to invite you to join me in awakening from a long amnesia.